Hello all, how are you doing? I hope you are doing well and safe. Uh, today we will start uh, the first virtual class, which is biomedical image processing and analysis. And uh, I will introduce the objective of the course, the course description, the syllabus, and uh, the concept about the course uh, in today's class. Uh, I hope you have uh, covered the basic concepts of image processing in your undergrad uh, that we'll try to revise uh, in this course also. The first and the second chapter will be more of a revision from your undergrad and uh, we'll go to the advanced uh, image processing and analysis in the remaining chapters. So before that, I want you to uh, define what an image is using your own words. What do you think is an image? Okay, so image is a signal. General term, in general term, we can express image as a signal. And signal is a function, a function or a variable with a physical meaning. There are different kinds of signals. You know, one dimensional signal, which is dependent on time. There are also two dimensional signals, which are dependent on spatial coordinates. We call them 2D images. We have also three dimensional signals. When you describe an object in space, you will have three dimensions, three coordinate plates one X, one Y, and one Z. That is a three dimensional image or three dimensional signal. We have also higher dimensional signals. 4D signal, for example. A video, a 3D movie can be uh, considered as four dimensional signal because it has the three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. And a moving image, a moving 3D image can be considered as a 4D signal. We have also other signals that are called hyperspectral signals. Hyperspectral signals are dependent on, um, sorry, wavelengths. The resolution, the intensity is dependent on wavelengths or wave number. Those are called hyperspectral signals. So in general, an image is a signal and like other signals, they are functions of physical things. They are functions of independent variables. The most known independent variable is time. So one dimensional signals, for example, this is signal, it is dependent on time. Image is dependent on the spatial coordinate plates. The spatial coordinate plates in the case of images are independent variables. So the image function value can be expressed in terms of brightness. Brightness at the image point is the variation of brightness gives you a sense of image, a sense of image. Brightness depends on several factors. One is the object's surface reflectance properties. Light can be absorbed or reflected by an object. If most of the light is absorbed, you may not be able to see the object. You'll see the object if light is reflected from it. So surface reflectance property affects brightness. Illumination property also, the light source also affects. A dim light and a bright light will give you different kinds of image senses. Some kinds of uh, objects may also provide zero light. For example, fluorescent objects. So based on this, uh, their illumination property, the brightness value also will be different. Object surface orientation. With respect to the viewer and the light source of surface is the brightness. Temperature, distance from the observer are also other factors that affect brightness. So biomedical imaging, when it comes to biomedical imaging, it is a technique and process is to create images of human body or parts of, parts of it for clinical purpose. 
for studying anatomy and physiology or for diagnostic purpose. So biomedical image processing includes analysis, technology image acquisition also, enhancement and display of images. Biomedical images are acquired from different kinds of modalities, including X-ray, ultrasound, MRI, CT scan, and nuclear medicine imaging devices like PET and SPECT, optical imaging modalities also. So biomedical image processing is the analysis, the enhancement, and display of images acquired from biomedical imaging modalities. There are different kinds of images. You know, there are two kinds of signals, continuous and discrete or digital signals. The continuous signal amplitude as well as value is continuous throughout the independent variable. If the independent variable is, for example, time, the value will be infinite. You will get a value at infinite points at infinite time. When you come to a discrete signal, the signal is discretized throughout that time. Likewise, we have two kinds of image, analog image and digital image. In the analog image, the spatial distribution of brightness, or we can call them gray label values, are continuous through the spatial coordinates X and Y. This kind of images can be displayed using a paper or a film. We may have two kinds of analog images, black and white, as well as colored or RGB images. But the basic concept behind analog image is the brightness values are continuous throughout the spatial coordinates, throughout the independent variables. On the other case, digital image, they are discrete. The intensities, as well as the brightness, values are discrete. This kind of images can be expressed in terms of pixel. We call them picture elements or pixels. Discrete set of intensity values throughout the coordinate plates, planes. So in this kind of image, the size also, the size of that image can be expressed in terms of the pixel number of pixels in the Y, number of pixels in the X direction if it is a 2D or two-dimensional signal. So the pixel dimension is dependent on spatial sampling. When you convert analog signal to a digital signal, there are different kinds of steps, right, or procedures. The first one is sampling. Sampling with equal interval or some kinds of interval, taking a signal, taking a sample from that continuous independent variable is called sampling. Then the next step will be quantization. You quantize along the amplitude direction. Then finally, you will have both discrete signal in the independent variable and discrete signal in the amplitude direction. In the amplitude direction as well as in the independent variable direction, you will have a discrete signal. So that's called digital signal. The same thing for digital image also. The values, brightness values, will be discrete through the spatial coordinates x and y, plus the gray label values, or we call them intensities, will be also discrete. So along the spatial coordinates, we'll have a discrete set of brightness values, and the intensity can be also discretized. For example, 80-bit gray level image or resolution, the intensity will range from 0 to maximum 255. 0 will indicate the black, and 255 will indicate white or high intensity signal. So we have a discrete set of intensity values from 0 to 255.
There are different kinds of medical imaging modalities. The basics are ultrasound, the projection X-ray or radiography, the CT scan, the source is also X-ray, nuclear medicine imaging modalities, including SPECT, TATE, gamma camera, ultrasound, and MRI. We can have two kinds of images from these kinds of modalities as an anatomical or functional images. Anatomical images provide structural information, whereas functional imaging modalities, they provide physiological information or metabolic information. So in the case of anatomic imaging modalities, the image will be, the image will provide us a structural information. We don't have any kind of physiological information. We only look for a variation in the structure. If there is a deviation from the known structure, we can assume that there is some kind of abnormality on that image or on that object. So based on that, you can do some kind of diagnostic uh, process. But when it comes to functional imaging with physiological imaging modalities, we can have metabolic information, a change a change in the physiology, change in the metabolism of the object or the body. So MRI, CT scan, X-ray, normal ultrasound, they provide us anatomical information or structural information, whereas fMRI, PET, they can provide us physiological information or aspects. What do you think is the need for image processing? What is the problem with the image acquired from a different image modalities? Doctors may require special processing on the image to clearly identify abnormality or to clearly identify a change in the physiology due to some kind of external activation. So in this kind of in this kind of uh, processes, a special image processing or a special operation on the images may be required. Through image processing, images can be evaluated and analyzed. They can be also compressed, the size could be reduced, and so that they will be stored or sent to a different location. So image processing allows us to efficiently analyze the images, to store them, and to send them through compression. It's possible for doctors to see the interior portion of the human body with extreme clarity if they incorporate some kind of image processing. They can be able to identify some portion of abnormality through image segmentation, for example. It helps also doctors to make keyhole surgery without opening too much of the body during image guided surgery. There are different components of image processing. So biomedical image processing covers signal gathering, image forming, picture processing, and display. All of that is for diagnostic purpose or for some kind of research. So image processing covers mainly four main areas. Image formation, that includes image acquisition. Image visualization, visual, visualization which is proper display of images. Analysis of images. And management of the acquired information. So the image formation includes acquisition and digitization. In the enhancement, we may have different kinds of operation. Calibration, registration of images, optimization, transformation, filtering, all of these can be included under enhancement. Analysis could include feature extraction. After extracting important features, we can do some kind of analysis. We can identify what kind of disease is incorporated in the body or in the parts of the body or in the organ by doing feature extraction, feature segmentation. 
nature classification. All of this can be included under analysis. Compression, archiving, retrieval, communication, all of these also are image processing. They can be categorized under image management. So in the case of image processing, in, in all of this, in all of the image formation, enhancement, analysis, and management, there is an input. The input could be 2D image, or 3D image, or 4D image, and there is output. The output is also an image. It could be also a text sometimes. So image processing is just the black box, an algorithm that you perform to change the input image to a proper output image. For example, when you can see the left image here and the right image here. So image enhancement, the blurred image can be clearly viewed on the second enhanced image. So image blurring has been performed on this image. So you can clearly identify the parts of the image or components of the image through image enhancement. Image restoration is also another part of image processing. Image restoration, images that are acquired from different kinds of models may be contaminated by noise or artifacts. So image restoration helps us to recover the original images or pure images. As you can see here, the left image is affected by noise, period kinds of noise, and the right image is a processed image. So image restoration is the operation of taking a corrupt or noisy image and estimating the clean or original image. It may come in many forms, such as motion blur, noise, camera misfocus. So the purpose of image restoration is to recover the image. Image compression. It may not be appropriate to send a huge image that is acquired from, for example, MRI directly without any kind of operation to a different location. So to send that image, you may want to apply some kind of image compression technique. Then you can send the compressed file. So the input is uncompressed, large image, and the output will be compressed or uh, low size image. Computer vision also can be considered as image processing technique that deals with the development of theoretical and algorithmic basis by which is full information about the 3D order can be automatically extracted and analyzed from a single or multiple of 2D images of the world. This is called computer vision. So in the case of computer vision, you have a 2D image. So by using different kinds of algorithms, you'll have 3 D geometric data. That's called computer vision. Robotic vision also is another concept that can be considered or studied under computer vision. Application of computer vision in robotics for autonomous robot navigation, for example, for inspection and assembly. Pattern recognition, which is concerned with the recognition and classification of 2D objects mainly from 2D images. Identification of objects, identification of patterns in the body, but identification of some parts of the object for a special purpose is called pattern recognition. Artificial intelligence can be also considered as uh, image processing technique. It's, it is concerned with designing systems that are intelligent that can automatically detect abnormality. It is used to analyze scenes by computing a simple representation of the scene contents after the image has been processed to obtain features. So many techniques from artificial intelligence play an important role in many aspects of computer vision. So computer vision can be considered as a subfield of artificial intelligence.
There are different kinds of image processing applications. There are industrial application of image processing, commercial applications, medical applications. Our concern in this course is medical application of image processing. But generally, image processing can be applied for fingerprint verification or identification. We may have atlas of fingerprints and by comparing the input fingerprint with the atlas, the algorithm could be able to identify the person through fingerprint identification process. Object recognition. Once you train your, your algorithm using different kinds of objects, the next time it sees that object, it will automatically detect based on its shape, based on its texture, or based on it is color. Autonomous vehicles. Modern vehicles or cars are equipped with autonomous drivers. It can drive itself. To drive itself, it requires to see the road clearly, for example. it should be able to identify the object, an object, if it is a human, if it is, for example, another car, or any kind of obstacle should be identified for a car to drive it itself. It can be applied also for traffic monitoring to identify the congestion, traffic congestion in a road. Image processing can be applied for face detection also. Facial expression recognition. It helps researchers to identify facial expression, whether the person is sad, whether it's happy, angry. Image processing can help us identify facial expressions once you train it through some kind of deep learning or artificial, artificial intelligence techniques. Hand gesture recognition. This can be applied for sign language recognition, for example, or smart human computer user interfaces. Human activity recognition can be identified using image processing. So why do you think is medical image analysis so special? Why it requires special attention? So in the case of medical image analysis or processing, we apply the result on a patient or for a patient. So computer vision is good at detecting irregularities on the, for example, factory floor on the object, but patients are not all the same. The disease condition or the abnormality will be different from one patient to another. So everyone is irregular, we can say. That makes image, medical image analysis difficult task. Another thing, medicine is a war. Radiology is primary for reconnaissance. Surgeons are the maris, for example. Life in these decisions made on the insufficient information. This makes medicine a war. Doctors are fighting to detect disease. And the guns of the machines are medical imaging modalities. So success is measured by patient recovery. There are many applications of image processing or image analysis in the case of medical. It can be applied for skin cancer detection, breast cancer detection, segmentation to clearly identify the abnormality or parts of an object or organ. It requires labeling every pixel. In the case of gray matter, white matter segmentation, there are different parts of 
the white matter and gray matter of the brain part. So segmentation requires a tedious task. Leveling every voxel, for example, the, if let's say image size is 1024 by 1024, the expert maybe forced to segment 1024 by 1024 number of voxels in the 2D. And if it is 3, 3D, the large number of voxels or volume elements requires leveling, and that is a tedious task. It can be applied for image registration, registering an image to an image. It could be same image with a different imaging modality. For example, CT scan image can be registered with fMRI data image to get both functional information and anatomical information, or CT image data can be registered onto the fit image to get both the structural and physiological information. Fit image provides only physiological information. It's not good for structural information, but CT scan is best for structural information, but not good for physiological information. So registering both images will provide you both the physiological and anatomical information. That is the purpose of image registration. It can be also used for image to a model registration. For example, for deform deformable models to resize, for example, an image. Model to model or matching graphs as are also other image registration techniques. There are different kinds of models, landmarks, image primitives, features. So model to model, landmark to image primitive, landmarks to feature registration can be also another application of image processing or analysis. So image processing, it helps us the radiologist to come up with a decision, to come up with a decision. It could be automated or semi-automated image analysis. So for a decision, there should be a medical knowledge or patient history. So there will be data image or data acquisition. There will be display of the image with associated information. The human observer will compare the acquired image with the medical knowledge or patient history and come up with a decision. That's called a model of radiologists using image analysis. So that's, that's, uh, that all, uh, was all about the introduction or introducing the concept of image processing and analysis. Now let's see the uh, course objectives or course description. So in this course, you, are expected to understand the digital image fundamentals and it transforms to enhance the biomedical image, understand and develop algorithms, algorithms for medical image processing and analysis. So we'll, we'll start from the digital image fundamentals. In that section, we will see the concept of image, the image formation model, which is the basics, image sampling and quantization techniques, basic relationship between pixels, singular value representation of discrete images. Then we'll see image enhancement in spatial lumen. Uh, you have covered this uh, in the first portion in our undergrad, but this will help you as, that, I mean, as a review. So mathematical tools used in image processing, arithmetic operations, gray level transformation, histogram processing, spatial filtering, smoothing and sharpening, all of these techniques, image enhancement techniques, and spatial domain will be covered in this section. Then we'll see different kinds of image processing operators, including Fourier transform, the discrete cosine transform, wavelet transform will be covered in the application in image analysis in this uh, fourth section. Then on the fields, we'll see image segmentation, the feature extraction techniques, We'll cover the basic ideas, clustering in color space, segmentation algorithms, feature extraction. will be covered on this field's portion or section. Then the last one will be image fusion. And you'll see image fusion strategies and image registration techniques. So the class will be virtual. 
I will provide you assignments, different kinds of assignments, and I'll try to uh, give you also quizzes. There will be also project. So the assessment and evaluation include quiz, project, class attendance, virtual class attendance, and final exam. I will give you different kinds of reference materials. But I hope Gonzalez, you know Gonzalez from your undergrad, so that uh, also will help you uh, to grasp the concepts of uh, this course. Thank you. Uh, see you next time.